All right, so I'm still recovering from Sean O'Malley's KO last week and the mild shockwaves that they have sent across the entire sport, dare I say the world. I do say mild. I was expecting a little bit more, to be honest, seeing as he's such a massive star after all. Uh, anyway, the UFC takes itself back across the pond to UFC Singapore, where there is real value here to dig up on a card that is packed full of prospects, rehashes and nice match matchups. Some horrible, but I'll get to that. Let's find that value right now. Alright, I'm picking Song Wu Choi. The record looks horrible, but he's a very decent kickboxer that has had really solid performances against noteworthy competition. His loss against Gomi does concern me, along with the loss streak, loss streak that has really ravaged his record, but I don't think Aaron's carries the threat that Choi does to cause damage. I think this is going to go to the judges' scorecards, with Aaron's being somewhat durable at these odds. Choi at the money line does represent decent parlay fluff value. Avoid, avoid, avoid like the plague. The money line on this one is utterly shameful. Nas should have some advantage in the stand-up with better accuracy while looking goofy at times. But I think these advantages might prove to give openings for Aldridge in the takedown, who is balanced but doesn't really excel anywhere. I can't even pick this to go the distance, which is usually my line booster for fights in women's MMA for unskilled matchups. Aldridge should be more well-rounded, but doesn't have finishing potential, and I can see her grinding this one out on the money line. Alright, this is another fight I don't love. Kinoshita is coming in as the favourite, and while he does have decent stand-up, he got bonged out hard against Adam Fugit, who despite getting slapped by Mike Maloa in his fight after, to me is not actually very bad. The reason I don't like this is that although Kinoshita should be more accomplished as a striker, this is likely to descend into a brawl, and both men have shown they can finish and be finished, and I don't play coin flips like a mong. If you want to get a little fluff on a parlay, which is what I do mostly, take the under 2.5 to cash when these two rock'em sock'em robot robots swing for the fences. Again, these odds are fucking disrespectful. Bedoya looked fantastic coming in on short notice versus Chaos Williams, and I don't want to underplay that, who does throw heat and did a really good job in what I felt was a really close decision loss. We have seen how guys that can come in and throw caution to the window can sometimes catch unnecessary hype. And while I think he should win on paper, Song can crack. He hurt Gary and had six months uh, off to recover after getting slapped hard back. And with both carrying power, I can see this starting cautious and sucking time. I'm going to take a punt and say Bedoya should win, but that it might creep over 1.5. Vegas is expecting a quick KO and I have a hunch that Song will lose, but make it tough enough for long enough. Alright, I do really like Chidi. I think he's explosive and dangerous, but is fading demonstrated in his, in his last few, and I think Mikel is going to have the volume and pressure to survive the first round and then take over. He has a chin and has proven that consistently, and I feel Chidi's only chance is to starch him in the first round, which to me is uh, not the most likely. It's MMA though, it is possible. Another factor that if it does get sloppy and Mikel does get cracked, he does have the option to go to a grappling game, grab a leg, grab a leg, which granted isn't his bread and butter, but a viable option. I like Mikel's stinging jabs, and I think he's going to gain respect, wear Chidi down, and I think that MA ML pays off well enough to not have to risk a finish to get paid. Alright, Kazama is a one-trick pony, and despite looking uh, like, a, like he has a decent record, he beat up a stack of regional cans and got absolutely fucked up against another guy we will look at further down the card in Nakamura. Kazama will likely have the advantage on the ground in terms of offensive jujitsu, but I think he's going to get hurt by Armfield on the feet, who will be too competent on the ground to fall into anything stupid once Kazama's wobbled. I can see Armfield either putting him out or knocking him down and keeping scoring positions on the ground to cash a good money line. Alright, Waldo for me is so goddamn overrated and I cannot understand this. At, so at two point, minus 2.5, there is no way I'm playing this talentless scrub on the money line. Aberski is coming off a lo loss against Budai, who looked like an absolute axe murderer, albeit against Parisian in his last bout. And that fight with Bursky went to a decision that was scrappy and nasty. Uh, Lucas is not amazing, but he's extremely durable and tough enough to finish. And I think the fact is Vegas, that Vegas is expecting a quick finish here in this one is ludicrous to me. Waldo is not outrageously powerful, and I think he's going to get into a typical sloppy brawl here that goes over 1.5, and potentially the distance. All right, I don't care that Porker won his last fight. That was against Braxton Smith, who threw right overhands, gassed out like a 
a World War II boiler and fucking collapsed like he was having a cardiac arrest. Taffer is a very hard hitter, and I think he's going to catch Porker in the first round and annihilate the little piggy. Fortunately, I think the ML is enticing enough, enticing enough to take Taffer, who got wrestle fucked by Mohamed Usman, who despite being fuckers fucking horrendous, can resort to that. Porker won't have the same power. Look at the guy. I think he tries to throw hands within Taffer's wheelhouse and gets smashed. I've got the ML for Taffer or by KO if you're feeling a little bit extra spicy. This is a great matchup. Don't double take. I know it's a woman's fight, but this one makes all the sense in the world. I'm extremely high on Blanchfield. Uh, I made massive on her to beat Andrade. And while that looks less imp impressive in hindsight, after she's been getting bodied, I still like her. Santos is going to provide more of a match in the takedown though. And while Blanchfield shocked everyone by trading with Andrade and actually winning the stand-up, I'm not convinced with it. I do think she's going to win a decision and gain a title shot, but I'm more comfortable with dodgy judging to take over the 2.5 with both of them so competent on the ground and generally well-rounded. What are Garcia's management team doing? Seriously, this is the biggest potential lock of the card and we have a lopsided main event coming up to consider also. I think Nakamura is going to fuck this man up and it's going to be brutal. I think he marches across the cage with no fear, throws hands and knock Gar knocks Garcia's head into orbit in the first round. Crowd goes bananas with the last Asian on the card winning spectacularly. Sending them home talking about how Asians are just better. Sorry, it is what it is. This is a banker. Alright, I'm pulling in two directions here. And I actually think they're going in, are going in the same direction for once, which doesn't really make sense now I think about it. I have never been that high on Chikedzi. He's had way too many close decisions. And yeah, he beat Barbosa, but he got fraud checked by Qatar in a dominant loss. And Bruce Leroy is experienced, dangerous on the feet, and is clearly leveled up for me and carries the greater threat if this ends up on the ground with his ability to take the back and backpack. Don't bet big on this. Giga does carry a threat, but I think Leroy has level up, leveled up and has more avenues to win on a tasty money line. Do I think Span has only started training recently and is suddenly an actually good fighter? No, I do not. That's ridiculous. And he's a fucking dumbass for even claiming it. That loss against Krylov so easily after looking like he had turned a corner proves that. However, what Johnny Do Walker did in doing what he did to, uh, to Smith has completely convinced me that he's washed and it's over for him. He's regressed massively and I'm banking on Smith progressing at a faster rate to overlap the lack of progress that Span has made and I think, he, I think that Span's going to be fresher in the game and strong enough to cause enough damage to win, be it by stoppage or on the money line overall. This should not be the co-main event by the way. Alright, when Holloway called out TKZ after his last win against Arnold Annal, Allen, which was competitive, I thought it was a joke. Uh, I know they're both living legends, but this doesn't make any fucking sense whatsoever. Star-wise, star this is the perfect matchup for Max, who will beat him to the punch all night and put more CTE on a guy that really doesn't need it at this stage of his life. Does anyone really? This is clearly a farewell fight for TKZ in his hemisphere against a top name for a last chance at glory, but I just don't see it happening. I think Max is going to slap around a fighter I love like a piñata and that he will ultimately win by mercy stoppage or looking like a Jackson Pollock painting at the end of five rounds. UFC is moving dirty on this one. TKC should be getting a more winnable match and Max should be trying to show to Puria that there is still a gap between him and everyone else below Volk. Volk. Alright, so let's round this one up as I promised to one of my favourite subscribers by just rounding up the picks. Uh, I like the Choi money line. I think Aldridge on the money line is good as well. A uh, Goff and Yinashita who are going to rock em sock em is good to go under 2.5 I think. Kanan and Bedoya I think is going to sneak over to 1.5. I like Oleg Zaychik on the money line by being too active. Armfield I think is going to bong out Kazama and be too strong on the ground. Uh, I think the over 1.5 is the play for uh, Cortez Acosta. But I'd even go spicy and go a 2.5 on that. I think they're both sloppy. I think uh, Taff is going to absolutely smash Porter. I think Blanchfield and Santos could go over 2.5. I'm not too confident about that. Uh, Nakamura, I think, is going to destroy Garcia. I think Caceres uh, ekes out a money line win. Same for Span. I just think he's going to be too good for Smith. And I think Holloway is going to finish by late TKO or unanimous decision against the Korean Zombie. All right, so I'm coming in with a record this year of 227, 107, which finally put me up to 68%. I'm looking forward to breaking this down on the weekend. Uh, it is going to be weird to watch this in the middle of the afternoon. 
which is really going to fuck with my football schedule, but I know what I'm going to be watching. I have a great week, and as always, I look forward to breaking this one down. In a bit, fuckers.